<laughs> Before I turned 40, I never had much of a problem with the milestone birthdays. I remember turning 10 being pretty cool because I was finally in double digits. <laughs> 21, I had my first legal beer at the PM Club on Howard Street in Chicago. Mm. Any Wildcats here tonight? Remember that place? Yeah. <laughs> The bartender checked my ID, grinned, and said, happy birthday. And he gave me a free hot dog. <laughs> the big 3-0 was, was rather ho-hum. I had a strawberry margarita cruise through that one. So I didn't expect 40 would cause much of a ripple. Boy, was I wrong. The approach of 40 came at me like a runaway freight train. For one thing, I realized that, assuming I had lived a normal lifespan, my time on the planet was about half over. There were physical issues cropping up that I hadn't dealt with much before. Muscle aches and sprains and stiff joints. A few gray hairs had started to sprout. More concerning though, as 40 drew near, my life seemed to be unraveling on multiple fronts. After 10 plus years of marriage, I had just gone through a divorce. The emotional and financial stresses of that were taking a heavy toll. I was also now a single dad of a 40-year-old boy with all the problems and issues that sharing custody into. My career had hit a major stall. After 10 years working as a magazine writer, I'd taken a corporate job in my early 30s for the stability and heftier paychecks. But now I was feeling trapped bored and increasingly restless. On top of all this, I had virtually no social life. I wasn't dating, and most of my good friends lived in other parts of the country. So when a college buddy, also approaching 40, called to suggest that we do something wild to mark our looming birthdays, I was all for it. Larry worked as a reporter and columnist for a Bay Area newspaper. He liked his job and was happily married, but Larry was also growing more restless and stressed as life's time clock relentlessly ticked on. We both wanted to share something adventurous, something defiant, something risky. We decided we'd climb Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Half Dome, it's, it's quite a daunting challenge. You face an almost sheer rock wall it gradually curves upward to the 9,000-foot summit that overlooks Yosemite Valley. There are embedded steel cables that you haul yourself up on hand over hand. Wooden planks are nailed into the rock at 10-foot intervals to provide some footing. A quarter-mile climb to the summit is straight up, almost vertical in places. And it's heroism. There are no safety harnesses or climbing gear unless you bring your own. Few people do. It was mid-September when we set off on the two-day trek, with temperatures in the 80s under a blazing sun. Day one was exhausting. A 15-mile hike into the park with a 5,000-foot altitude gain. Being burdened with 40-pound packs of food and camping gear didn't help. Mm -hmm. We set up camp by a stream, wolfed down hot dogs and macaroni, and slept like rocks. We arrived at the base of Half Dome around mid-morning on day two. Staring up at the imposing rock wall, we quickly got cold feet. <laughs> it looked insane. It looked like a ticket to instant death. Larry and I had come here to defy our advancing years but we both valued being alive. <laughs> we weren't batshit crazy. There, there was simply no way we were going through with this. We sat at the base for almost an hour, resting, eating trail mix, and watching other hikers arrive and begin their ascent. Among them was a pack of gleeful young Germans. <laughs> Why are our national parks always teeming with Germans? <laughs> The scene was, was mesmerizing. The climbers looked like ants crawling up the vertical rock face. Then, just as we were about to return to our campsite, where we planned to kick back with a flask of Jack Daniels, an older couple arrived. 
They looked to be at least in their mid-60s. Minutes later, they started to make the climb. Larry and I looked at each other. Fuck. <laughs> Let's do this. The climb was harrowing. I was not only fearful of losing my grip on the cable, I was also worried someone above us might fall and take us down with them like bowling pins. <laughs> foot by foot, we inched our way up. I forced myself not to look down. I tried to go zen, to empty my mind, focus on my breathing as I took each labored step. After what seemed like an eternity, we finally reached the summit. There was a fairly large level area of smooth rock at the top. The Germans had laid out a spread. We were having a boisterous picnic, <laughs> devouring bread and sausages and cheese. I half expected to see a stout barmaid dressed in lederhosen dispensing steins of lager. The older couple sat nearby, amused at the Germans' antics. We chatted with them briefly and learned they were actually in their 70s. They're nature, avid nature lovers, and they climbed half them twice before. We gingerly made our way to the far edge of the summit, top of that sheer granite wall that looms over Yosemite Valley. The view from there was truly spectacular. As I gazed out over the valley, I'd never felt more grateful and privileged to be alive. Our descent was slow and agonizing. When we both finally planted our feet at the foot of the mountain, Larry and I whooped and high-fived with joy and relief. I'm hoping to repeat that on the morning of November 6th. <laughs> Back home a couple days later, still exhilarated, I was dreading the return to my fraught existence and humdrum daily life. But then an amazing awakening took place. I suddenly felt motivated to take charge of my situation, to take the kinds of actions and risks that I too long shied away from. A couple weeks earlier, I'd been offered a speech writing position, which I turned down because I'd never done that kind of work. Now I reverse course and I embrace the new challenge. Next, I refinance my house, which brought a measure of financial relief. I ran the LA Marathon just for the hell of it. Mm. I auditioned for the game show Jeopardy, made the cut, and won a much needed dining room set. <laughs> <laughs> my ex-wife had the previous one. <laughs> I started taking my little boy on weekend excursions to the zoo and youth theater shows and overnight camping trips. He loved sleeping in the tent. Finally, I began making a real effort to get a social life. Joined a tennis league and made new friends. I ventured into online dating. Some connections worked out for a time, others didn't. But ultimately, I met and married Melissa, the love of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking back now, I, I can't say that our risky endeavor at Half Dome by itself led to the turnaround in my life, but it certainly was a major catalyst. It shook me out of the doldrums, energized me, and, and helped me gain the confidence and the will to chart a new path forward. As author and risk taker Jack Kerouac once advised a troubled colleague, don't just sit there whining and fretting, go out and climb a goddamn mountain, <laughs> which is exactly what I did. 